I've been passionate about space ever since I can remember. There's something that draws me into that, and I try to make sense of it. And the way I did that was by reading a lot of books. And one such book I read as an young kid was Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. This is a very nice book with anecdotes of people who made it big in life. And what I learned from this book, the gist of it was that if you wanted to achieve something in life, you have to set a goal that's slightly beyond reach technologically from the current times and set a very clear deadline for that. And I read this book uh, when I was about, around 2002, when I was around 14 years. And the goal I set for myself back then was that in 20 years, I want to get to Mars. And so this was the problem I set for myself. And everything I've done in life since then has been to achieve this goal. So the first thing I looked at this problem was, so we have this planet, this is crazy, it's huge and stuff. So what's required to get us there? And from all the analysis I did as a young kid by reading about stuff, I found that we don't have a big rocket that can take us there right now. So this meant new materials that could help us get to space, a material that was extremely strong, light in weight, and ideal for space usage. And the search that I did came up with just one material for this achievement, and that's a carbon nanotube. Carbon nanotubes are an advanced material. They're incredibly small. Each tube uh, is about a million times smaller than a hair strand, but carbon nanotubes are 100 times stronger than steel while being 10 times lighter. And these were discovered 25 years ago. And when I looked up as to why we don't see nanotubes in our daily life, what I found was that nanotubes are incredibly difficult to make. So we are speaking of something whose size is measured in atoms. So each tube that you see here has a diameter of about six to eight hydrogen atoms. That's how tiny these are. And producing them consistently is a very big challenge. So I took up my studies on nanotechnology, did a master's on this, and then finally decided that I'm going to solve this problem by starting a company to do that. And to found the company, I wanted to find a very good co-founder. So I looked around to find who made the best nanotubes. And the only result that came out was a Nobel laureate called Richard Smalley. But Smalley, unfortunately, had passed away around 2007. So, and that was too late by the time I wanted to start it. So the next best thing was to find his student who had worked the PhD thesis. And together, we founded the company. And when we started our work, the first phone call we had, Kelly told me that, see, there's a Nobel laureate who has spent his Nobel winnings on this project, and they could not scale this. Are you sure you want to put your money on this? Yes, I said, I'm all ready for this. Let me do that. I'm just young, and I can waste my time on this. That's fine. And every time we reached out to people, everybody said, there's no way an Indian company is going to produce nanotubes and stuff. So that became the name of the company. It stands for Not Possible. <laughs> and as we got started with all the excitement, things went bad, like really bad. So stuff blew up all the time, fuses blew up all the time, heaters melted, and the reactors just couldn't withstand the temperatures and pressures we were running at. And this was the mess that we were in all the time. So they just had wires running all over the place on the reactors. So we took us four years, and after four years of continuous work, we finally produced the nanotubes. So as of now, we make some of the best nanotubes the world has ever seen, and we have now moved to a prototype, to a pilot plan. So these are being used for a lot of research in electronics and also in space. We are working with most of the agencies in the world with this material. And with the nanotubes in hand, now it was time to rethink. Now, now that we started with this goal of getting transportation all the way to Mars, now, are we there yet, or what are the technological breakthroughs we require, and what's still missing, and what are the state of things right now? And we realized that the tech that we were looking at, we could create new propulsion systems that could take us faster to Mars in a much safer way than existing rockets. And as we started working on these concepts and trying to make the calculations and physics behind that, we realized that the structures we had been designing, they have an unexpected end use. They turn out to be the best water filters possible. And the way this works is like this. Now, traditionally, when you have a water filtration device, it is a big mesh that's trying to remove big contaminants from the mesh. But the nanotubes are so small that they transport individual water molecules. So this makes for the ultimate water filter. And these devices are 10 times faster than reverse osmosis. They're much cheaper, and they can work with any kind of water. And there have been experiments done at Lawrence Livermore that suggest that they can also be used for purifying desalin for desalination of water, too. So this was an unexpected consequence of the project that we started. So we realized that we can build these, we can give it to the people, and as we build these, we also build our propulsion systems that take us all the way to Mars. So and we have been working with various space agencies, and if everything goes well, 2019 is when the, our nanotubes will be going to Mars and getting there. So that's on the plans, and we hope that will happen soon. And after this, the next Inc. talk in 2030, I hope to be giving a live presentation from Mars. Thank you.